and uh, have a seat because uh, we're going to start talking about put a ring on it episode. This is season four, episode three. And um, uh, Dunbar and Chance, uh, they have bowed out. They have bowed out. What they say, if the heat gets too hot in the kitchen, you got to get out. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat in the kitchen, then get out. And what they said is, well, then we're going to get out because uh, Dunbar was about to have a serious, a nervous breakdown. Well, he already pretty much had one. He was like, he's going to have too many of them here on camera. And he said, this is not going to be the best place for us. But he really just showed the truth. He should have said that this is going to be too hard on my mental health. He really should have said, this is going to be too hard on my mental health and I can't go forward. But instead, he tried to act like uh, he and Chance and Dunbar, they got it all uh, worked out and together. I already told you guys in episode one that I knew that Daddy Dunbar had some mental problems or something really going wrong. Because in the beginning, I don't know if you guys have been watching since episode one, I pretty much pointed out that the reason why he was so in a rush to marry Chance so soon, so fast, was because he's got secrets and he's got skeletons and he needs to marry her fast before she finds out and she leaves him. That was my whole statement. And here we are today, a coming full circle fruition saying, coming out his mouth, that he has had problems in the past with relationships, with anger, depression, anxiety, and a whole list of things. And it has been the death of all his relationships. And so as soon as a person finds out about it and realizes it's just not a one-time thing, it's a series of issues, they leave him. And so what he has resorted to now, instead of getting help, instead of going to a therapist, instead of going to a counselor, he decides his new game plan is to find a woman, control her, and then marry her really, really fast before she finds out. And here he is. And the truth be told, I don't even think a Daddy Dunbar wanted to even come on this show, put a ring on it. I don't think so. I think this was all um, probably chance, a chances, I, chances suggestion. I don't think Daddy Dunbar would have ever wanted to come on this show and be found out like this. I don't think he would have ever wanted his real mental health to be exposed on camera like this because this could be embarrassing for him. It could be triggering for him and it could be a setback for him. I think this was all Chance's, I, Chance's idea because I think she likes the spotlight. I think she likes the spotlight. She likes the limelight. And she actually is the one with all the bravado, all of the uh, uh. She's that girl. Because she bucks up with Dr. Stacy at any time. She bucks up to the dates. She bucks up to she bucks up to Daddy Dunbar. Anytime Daddy Dunbar tries to open up his mouth and say something, Chance is right there snapping back at him. Snapping back at him. She talks about she's submissive. She's nowhere near submissive. This whole idea to come on this show was her idea. She probably coached him into it, tricked him into it, and said, if you come on this show, then this will get me closer to marrying you. And Daddy Dunbar was so desperate to have Chance marry him, he decided to come on the show. But now here they are on this darn near a mental breakdown on TV and Dr. Stacy doing some real, real work. And once Chance saw that Dr. Stacy wasn't just going to be playing on this show, that she was really going to dig deep, Chance pulled the plug and said, no, we're not doing this no more. We're not doing this no more. This is backfiring on me because now Dr. Stacy is coming for me too. Absolutely not. And Chance pulled the plug. And Daddy Dunbar was like, that's good. I'm willing to pull the plug too. And then um, I bet you, uh, you know, Daddy Dunbar is just going to keep going down his road trying to get Chance uh, to marry him as soon as possible. And she's not going to marry him. She may uh, take a ring from him. She may say she's going to marry him. She may walk around with a three carat, four carat diamond ring on her finger, but she'll never, she'll, she'll never be before a judge or a pastor or anyone else saying, I do. I don't believe it. I don't believe it because Chance is calculating and she's smart and she's not going to do it. Everything Daddy Dunbar is afraid of is actually the truth. It's actually the truth. Chance is using Daddy Dunbar. Chance is using Daddy Dunbar and he thinks he's a stronger one. He thinks he's a leader, um, and, but he knows in his gut he's not. Chance is the leader of this relationship. She's the mastermind behind all of this. And um, by the end of this little relationship that they're in, a Daddy Dunbar might be in a hospital because he's fragile and um, he's very, very fragile. And I'm telling you, I could see who a chance is. The way she bucks up and goes at it with Dr. Stacy, that girl's a pit bull. She is a pit bull. But Daddy Dunbar needs a little bit of help. He knows where it's come from. He's, hey, he came up in a bad 
upbringing. He saw some serious physical abuse as a child. He talks about he has never been able to learn how to control his own anxiety. He used sports as a way to get out his aggression in sports. Um, and now he doesn't have sports, so where does it go? He's afraid of himself. He's afraid of things he would say or he would do to others. He needs some help. And Dr. Stacy, you could tell Dr. Stacy wanted to help Chance, not just in this show, but outside of the show. I really hope that off camera, once this was all over with, Dr. Stacy went up to Daddy Dunbar and says, listen, even though you guys aren't on the show anymore, here's my card. You need to call me. And not only here's my card, you need to call me. I've got some references for you to really hook you up with, with some. Because I think Dr. Stacy is a relationship mentor. I'm not for sure what her degree is in. But if she's in a degree of psychology, a psychiatrist, whatever, she needs to help him off camera. He needs a lot of help. He barely can keep it together. Every time Daddy Dunbar is on the screen, he looks like he's about to burst out in tears. There is so much welling up inside of him. It was really hard to watch. I'm kind of glad they're off the show because I like to keep my videos lighthearted and fun. Y'all know I like to tell jokes and it would be really hard to tell jokes and have fun <laughs> knowing that Daddy Dunbar stuff is real. It is so real, y'all. It is really, really, really real. It's real. We got into this real stuff last season with Shorty and um, Kenny. Remember, we knew Kenny had some problems. <laughs> But let me tell you, Daddy Dunbar's is deeper than Kenny's. It really is. Well, how does Putter Ring on it find these people? <laughs> they must be trolling real doctor offices uh, records. They must uh, be sneaking in some doctor's offices and looking up records of patients and pulling their files and then calling up to be on this show because I put a ring on it. They got some serious um, investigations they do because even in this episode, they didn't pull back exes from years ago. How the heck they find, how the heck are they doing this? Uh, she put a ring on it. They questionnaire to be on the show must be intensive, intensive. Uh, Dr. Dr. Stacy said, uh, Chance, you are betraying yourself. And, this, and Chance was like, how am I betraying myself by sticking by a man I love? <laughs> Dr. Stacy was like, girl, uh, sit down, girl, uh, sit down, lean back, lean back. Don't be, don't be sitting up in the chair like this. Lean back, stay seated. <laughs> you ain't gonna punch me in my face. She's like, are you betraying yourself because you're not even seeing the situation through? You're not even uh, letting any red flags come to light and recognizing them as red flags. You trying to uh, do a big old cover up. <laughs> She's like, you don't even want to face it head on. You too busy trying to act like it ain't a big deal. That's so she won't feel guilty. Keep taking advantage of Daddy Dunbar. She don't really want to recognize the real mental illness of Daddy Dunbar because then she would feel then she would have some responsibility to treat him differently. I just out here using Daddy Dunbar. I'm telling you, Daddy Dunbar is paying all the bills. I'm telling you. All of them. Whatever money. I'm not saying Chance don't make money. I'm not saying Chance can't pay her own bills, but she ain't using none of her money. She is using Daddy Dunbar to be on these shows for the limelight. And for everything else, it, it, I don't even know all what it is, but I'm telling you, I know a situation when a woman is using a man and she using him. She is using him. But then we move on to Ricky and Catherine. And thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine, for taking off the sweatpants. And thank you, Catherine, that when that ex-wife showed up to take her man out on these ex's dates, she had on a cute dress. Thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that. Finally, you doing something that you should be doing. Come to find out that they're just good co-parents and that there really isn't any sort of um, a thing going on between them. Uh, and, and let me tell you, uh, uh, Ricky's ex-wife, ex-whatever, baby mama, ex-wife, she's a good-looking young lady. She's pretty. But I didn't get no vibes that she wanted a chapstick Ricky. That girl did not want a chapstick Ricky. She ain't interested in him one bit. She's just interested in making sure that no new woman comes in between uh, Ricky and the child. She wants them to have a good co-parenting relationship because she's got two kids, we hear. So she probably has a kid by another father, but Ricky is probably a really responsible dad and she's not trying to mess up that relationship with Ricky. Sounds like she's got two kids, had one before they were together. And so maybe Ricky plays stepdad to one of the kids and he's the real father to the second one. And so this woman is probably saying, this is the real father figure I have in both of my kids' life and I don't want to lose him. And you know what? She actually told Ricky the, the correct thing. If you want this situation to get better, then you have to cre create scenarios where it's together. That's what I was saying. I really never did understand 
why if Ricky wants to um, keep the kids, that's no problem if he wants to keep them overnight. But I didn't understand why the kids can't come to Ricky and Catherine's house. Why Ricky got to sleep over at um, why Ricky got to sleep over at the ex's house. But it seems like that's not even an issue anymore. So um, Ricky does need to do more in saying uh, stop the separation between the ex-wife, the kids, and the Catherine. Let's join all together. Let's do things together. Let's uh, let's keep the kids together. Let's go to dinner together. Let's create a real, a blended family. And then maybe Catherine will feel more comfortable. But I suspect it's more than that. I suspect it's more than that. I'm not for sure um, Ricky wants to get into uh, that type of relationship with Catherine. I'm not sure. And then when Catherine had this little date with her ex, one of the things the ex said was uh, Catherine was really stubborn. Catherine was sort of like, you know, had this sort of part of her personality where she didn't listen and she, she, she continually brought up things that were over with, which is here we go again. He kind of says she brings up things in the current that happened a long time ago. And we find out that this whole thing of him sleeping on the couch of the ex isn't anything even recent that that stopped a long time ago, but she's still bringing it up. So even though she so-called improved, and like the ex said, the ex that came over, what was his name, Craig or somebody, said she's improved, she's still kind of doing the same old things. She's still kind of doing the same thing. She might be a little stuck because she says she was triggered when she dated that guy. She was triggered by him because some of the same things she's experiencing with Ricky happened with him with, you know, how do you balance the exes that got kids. But now she finds herself in the same situation. I suspect that Catherine, after she had that situation with that ex, she probably went through a lot of years where she didn't want to date a man that had kids. She probably said, you know what, that was such a bad situation. I don't want to date any man with kids. And then next thing you know, she stumbles upon Ricky and now she decides, okay, well, I'll give him a chance. But even though I have this rule, I don't want to date a man with kids. And then next thing you know, she's coming up with the same, some of the same problems. So although she's older, I don't know how long ago she dated that guy, she's kind of experiencing the same thing. So... I don't know. She, I guess she dated him when she was 20. How old is Catherine now? She looks like she in her, she was she about 30 now, you guys think? I don't know. So she's, it's almost like Groundhog Day. She was in this situation when she was 20. Now she's in it when she's 30, but she's not handling any differently. I don't know if that's real growth, but who knows? Maybe the fact that she's on this show shows growth. Maybe that does show growth. But hey, I guess it is, it is a sad situation when you find yourself in the same situation a 10 years later. Have you really made any progress if you're not doing anything differently and you're handling this situation the same way, the same way? I don't know. I still don't get real romantic vibes from Catherine and Ricky. I just look at um, Catherine. And she's just, uh, you know, she's just a, she's just living, you know, she's just living in house, you know, someone to be with. He loves her. But I don't know. I don't know. You guys it doesn't look it doesn't look uh, good to me. It doesn't look like I see them down the line getting married, having kids. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I hope it. I hope I am wrong because I love love. I want them to be together. I want them to go to the next level. And maybe this will be a situation like the situation that happened with. Um, that's what I'm going to think. Maybe the situation, the situation that happened a few seasons ago with Mike and Shay. I brought that up before that if that maybe the reason Ricky didn't really want to marry Catherine is because Catherine has a fa hasn't found a place where she can get along with the the ex-wife. So Ricky's like, I'm not going to marry you till you figure this out. And Catherine has been waiting for Ricky to figure it out and make it smooth when really Catherine needed to take the lead. Catherine needed to be the one to say, hey, um, what is the girl's name? I forget the... Whatever the girl's name is, the ex the ex wife said, "Hey, why don't you come over for dinner? I'm gonna have I'm gonna cook dinner. Why don't you come over, bring the kids over?" Catherine is waiting for Ricky to plan all these events to do things, but the truth of the matter is, if she wants to be the one to get married to Ricky, and if this is a sticking ground for him, she's actually got to take the lead. Should Ricky be the one to do it? He really should. But if he's not doing it and Catherine wants to get married and this is a reason why he won't marry her, then she needs to take the lead. She needs to be the one planning the play dates, planning the dinner dates, doing whatever she needs to do to let Ricky know, to one, make her feel more comfortable with the girl, but also to let Ricky know that, hey, not only do I love your child and your the stepchild that you probably paid a, a father to, but I'm also willing to embrace and be friends with your ex-wife because I want us to have a real big blended family. It was the same, you know, hey, sometimes the women have to step up and create the situation. 
If the man isn't stopping it, you may have to be the one to do it if you want to get to marriage. It happened even last year with Shay and Alfonso. They were going through the same thing, but Alfonso was keeping... Um, Alfonso was keeping something in between Shay and the ex-wife and they didn't want to get together. Catherine actually is in a better position because the girl doesn't have a, any problem with Catherine. So Catherine really could bridge this gap if she really wanted to, but she has to be proactive. But I don't think that Catherine is a proactive person. I think she's kind of like leans back and doesn't pr pretty much do too much. Even like I talked about the way she dresses, it's kind of lazy. When she didn't want to put on no clothes and she wants to wear sweatpants, it kind of points to a lazy thinker, a lazy person. I don't want to do what I need to do to make things better. She just wants Ricky to do everything. Just like Ricky says, I'm paying all the bills. Catherine just moves into the hotel, to the hostel, lives there. What's Catherine doing? I'm going to challenge her on that. I'm going to challenge her. What are you doing, Catherine, but sitting around asking for Ricky to do everything? What are you doing? What are you doing? And they said, are you going to get a second date with Sheila? Are you going to get a second date with Sheila? At first, he was like, no, 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 the girl from last week. And then finally said he really would want to go out with Sheila, but he didn't want to say it in front of Catherine. <laughs> so after Dr. Stacy pressed him, he's like, okay, I would go out with her again. So I don't know if next week we're going to see him going out with Sheila again. I don't know. I really don't know. But we're going to move on to Joy and Joshua. We're going to move on to Joy and Joshua. I was surprised when, when uh, Joshua said he didn't want to go out with that girl again. He lying. I sure hope he's not like, um, who was that who said they're not going to go out with the girl, but was going out with her behind the other girl's back? Was it Charlana? Was it Charlana and the guy last year when he tried to pretend like he didn't like the girl and wasn't going to call her, but behind uh, Charlana's back, he was over there texting her. That, that's kind of what uh, uh, Joshua reminds me of, that, that he's saying he don't want to go out with that girl anymore and that there was real no energy. But behind Joya's back, I wouldn't be surprised if he's texting her or exchanging numbers or talking about, oh no, it was just business talk. <laughs> but we find out, when I was saying last before, I was saying, I don't think um, uh, Joshua did, I was thinking Joshua didn't want any more kids. Or I was saying Joshua didn't want any kids. Um, I didn't think, I didn't know if he had kids or not, but we find out this time that he's actually been married before. He was married for five years back in Atlanta, Georgia. He already has a child, I think it's a daughter, and that the daughter is pretty much a living with the mother full time, and that that mother remarried. Okay, so that child already has a stepfather or a bonus dad. Uh, we come to find out as well that um, the reason they broke up was because they ran into some financial troubles and there were some trust issues. So more than likely, he cheated. <laughs> uh, more than likely, he cheated. There were some trust issues. Because uh, when men say there were some trust issues, it doesn't mean that he didn't trust her. <laughs> it means she didn't trust him. Cold words. Um, and that also played into their, uh, played into the demise of their marriage. So now we find out that, uh, Josh has been a couple of places. He's been married before, and he's also already has a child. And so what he's doing is he's saying, here I am out here now, um, unmarried, living in a completely other different state. And my child is being raised by a whole nother man. And probably what he's, and now he's over here being a stepdad to a whole nother other person's child. That's got to be a tough situation when your own child is out of state, but the girl you're with, their child is here and you uh, are more of a father to her child than maybe you are to your other child because you don't even get to see all the day in, day outs of your child, but you get to see the day in and day outs of her child. You get what I'm saying? That's got to be a real tough situation. And I could see how that would make you scared to do that again. What if I get with Joya, get with Joya, just like doctor said, what if I get with Joya, we have a child and it doesn't work out between us. Now I've got two children out here being raised possibly by whole other men. That's where I'm saying, I don't know if he really wants any more children. I think he loves Joya. I think he wants to be with Joya. Joya. I'm just not sure that he wants more children. I think he has been traumatized by this situation with his ex and how it's played out. And I think he probably does want to travel, have fun and have a good time. And I think he likes the idea that um, Joya seems to have a really active father in, his, in that child's life. That child goes to visit that dad in New York every summer and then stays with her during the year. And I think he looks at it as like, then why can't we just be together? Why do you, why do you, Joya, need another child? You got a child, I got a child, why can't we just be together? I really believe that's what Joshua wants. I don't think he wants any more children at all. 
I think that if Joya dropped the children thing, they would get married. I don't know if they would get married, but they would definitely be together because I think he does love her. But I don't think he wants any more children. He's going to need to be real honest about that. He needs to be really, really honest with her about that. But I think he decided not to go out with this girl, not because he didn't have anything in common with her and he didn't like her. I think he decided not to go out with her because he knew it was too close to the fire. I knew he thought this is too good of a match. And if I continue to go down this road, I might be like, um, uh, uh, what was his name last week? Demario, or whatever his name was, Damien, uh, something, whatever his name was the last time, the real, the real cheater. I might end up being like him and I don't want to get too close to the fire. I don't want to get too close to the fire because that could be dangerous. And I think that woman he was on a date with, she was dangerous to him because she was too much of what he would like and what he would want. Because even when he was talking about her, he was talking about how beautiful she was. And when she said uh, she didn't want any kids, he was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> he was into that girl. He was into that girl. I don't care what he says. I ain't believing him. He was into that girl. But we'll see. Next week, we see we're going to get a, a new couple in to replace Chance and Dunbar as they sail off into the sunset and solve their own problems and get each other the help they need. Oh, no. Chance said get Dunbar the help he needs. Get you some too, girl. I get you some too, because you need some too. But that's it, y'all. Please sure to watch my other videos. I'll talk to you later. Bye.